Hello, this is Greg Allison with Galactic Gregs coming to you from the wreckage of the DCX rocket on 17 June uh, 22. My friends, NASA has denied SpaceX. SpaceX has been denied to launch the Starship from KSC. I brought you with my very last video. The uh, story was, well, uh, SpaceX nuke KSC. And, well, that is just what the officials at KSC are afraid of. Now, I actually didn't think they would deny them. But they did, at least so far. So uh, we're going to go all into that. Why did that happen? Well, I've talked about that in that video and, and others before it, actually, because I also did a video, well, SpaceX nuke Boca Chica. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I'm a SpaceX fan, okay? So don't get me wrong. I'm a space fan. I'm sitting in the wreckage of the DCX rocket. And so, Greg, where do you find that? This is my backyard, by the way. What other YouTuber on space has stuff like this and workspace and has been new space and space advocate and all that, too? So subscribe to my channel, bang the notification bell, and click all, because I got a lot more space stories to bring you. So, my friends, uh, what happened is this. SpaceX was concerned, um, excuse me, NASA at KSC was concerned. There's many different NASAs. All the different fill centers have a lot of their own independence. It's like states in the union. KSC, NASA was afraid, and it could have been come from headquarters, but KSC was afraid that uh, Starship could explode and take out pad 39A, which is used to launch uh, SpaceX Dragon cap crew capsules and cargo capsules, the International Space Station, is afraid they wouldn't have a supply line to the International Space Station. As you know, at one time when we were using the Russians, uh, to cover up for cover us for that when we uh, quit flying the space shuttles. But unfortunately, our relationships with Mother Russia are somewhat less than absolutely spectacular, if you know what I mean. So, my friends, this is what's going on. Space, uh, the, the, the space station access uh, has got to be maintained, and we really need pad 39A to do it. And you're going, Greg, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal in the fear of NASA is the cavalier attitude that uh, Elon Musk has had toward blowing things up. And I understand that attitude because that's his development philosophy. Hey, that's the way you learn how to build things. You break things and blow things up and you learn more that way than you would through the cautious, expensive route NASA takes. The problem is that NASA doesn't want that to happen on their critical launch pad. That I understand. <laughs> Greg, what's there to be worried about? Well, it just so happens a fully fueled Starship has twice the explosive power, twice as much fuel as a fully fueled Saturn V or a fully fueled Russian N1 rocket. Now, the N1 rocket when it blew, that blew up in July of 1969 threw debris, considerable debris, for six miles. And uh, SpaceX, is, uh, SpaceX has already blown up two uh, the you know upper stage of Starship, the Starship part of Starship, <laughs> not the heavy booster which hasn't flown yet, but they've already blown up three of those at Boca Chica, and one of them did fling debris six miles, I think maybe seven. So there was debris flung quite a distance. Yeah, it might not have been a considerable amount, but it was enough that uh, SpaceX has had a lot of consternation in Boca Chica with the local authorities, the environmental side particularly, and that's why now they have set, you know, they've got approved to fly from there, but they got seven contingent. They have 75 things they have to accomplish before they can fly from Boca Chica. And they're not insubstantial, and some of it probably amounts to what I'd call extortion, like paying for uh, taking care of the local fishermen, sport fishermen. Yeah, that borders on extortion in my book. So uh, I think that's a bit much, but that is what SpaceX has been told to put up with. You know, I did videos once. I said, you know what, SpaceX needs to go to sea with those new uh, oil rigs they set up to be able to launch from. They should set their launch operations up to be able to launch to sea so they can get away from all this stuff. And what better place to run their, their, their uh, uh, rigs out of than the Port of Mobile, Alabama, which is a very much underutilized port that's just being started back up big time. And it uh, offers a lot of amenities there, not to mention Gulf of Mexico launch, Gulf of Mexico access for recovery. And, um, and you can go up the river to get away from uh, hurricanes. Uh, the Port of Mobile is you know, not hit as bad as a lot of places. And, uh, yeah, like I said, there's upriver access. You can even get access to stuff coming out of Decatur, Iuka, Mississippi, rocket plant up there, uh, <laughs> and all the engineers and stuff farther north. So there's a lot of advantages to SpaceX that should make a choice like that. But anyway, all that aside, the, uh, the thing is that uh, the, it is... Uh, just even even to pad 39b where uh the right now these the uh my stand-up skeeters eating me up here 
pad 39B where the uh, uh, Artemis 1 rocket space launch system is erect right now, ready for the wet dress rehearsal for Monday, which I'll be involved in. The uh, <clears throat> uh, That is only 1.64 miles, 1.64 miles. So that is well within the quantity distance of an explosion of a starship. So a starship could take out both pads uh, on its explosion. The vehicle assembly building is, uh, is close. The actual the mission, the launch control center, the LCC, is only three miles from pad 39A. Go to Google Earth, you can check it out. So that is all well within uh, areas that could be taken out by a, or highly damaged by a starship explosion. You know, I, I imagine the LCC is built pretty darn strong, but I have stood outside the LCC, I mean right there and watched space shuttles launch. Uh, by the way, the very first space shuttle launch I ever saw was not an NASA shuttle, it was actually the uh, X-37. <laughs> so that was my first space shuttle launch that I saw. And I actually had to work on that program a little bit. So anyway, skitters are about to eat me alive here. Yeah, this DCX rocket is next to my log barn. <laughs> Imagine that. So there we go, my friends. Um, this is the inner tank of the DCX rocket. The first rocket, when I'm sitting here, the first rocket, let me turn this video around, hang on guys. This is, be, this is the first rocket that I released several times. Uh, like uh, SpaceX is flying stuff today, landing, take, landing and take off vertically. And there's still a little bit of the aeroshell left that uh, Bart Rutan built here. With, oh, that's it right there, that's metal. And it's got the uh, it's got the aluminum lithium oxidizer tank in it. This is a pioneering vehicle that pioneered flights of these, which were used on the space shuttle to cut down weight so they could get it to the higher inclination to build the International Space Station. I could do a whole story on this rock because I was very much a part of the program. That's the avionics bay and all this stuff here. Like the flight computer set on that shelf in right back over there. <laughs> Yes, this is remnants of the DCXA rocket, my friends. I kid you not. So from one rocket wreck to another, from the DCX to, which, you know, this inspired a lot of what Elon's done, a lot of what uh, Jeff Bezos has done, from DCX to the future. Uh, I really hope that uh, SpaceX can pull this off, but they're going to have problems launching from KSC, and it's not going to be a cakewalk for them, for them to launch on Boca Chica. Like I said, 75 things they've got to clear and answer to, to be able to launch, got the skeeters off of me. Anyway, mosquitoes, as you might call them. But in any event, my friends, SpaceX has got uh, their lunch cut out for them. I think they really should have been putting their eggs in launching from a mobile platform. They got the two oil uh, rigs set up. They, uh, yeah, logistics is more interesting when you launch from sea, but they recover from sea, and I've done launches from sea. And by the way, I have done some work on contract for SpaceX looking at some of their sea recovery operations sometime back. Anyway, my friends, so here we are, DCX rocket behind me. Let's hope that SpaceX don't blow up uh, uh, any of that, anything with a super heavy booster underneath it. <laughs> that would be catastrophic, but it could happen. And it's just the philosophy, the Cavalier philosophy toward it, that's really got the guys at KSC scared. They're frightened about it. Uh, and, you know, I, I did not post that video to, like I do normally to a lot of the uh, SpaceX uh, Facebook pages. So I thought it'd just make everybody mad. They wouldn't believe it. But, my friends, when I tell you stuff, put it, take it to the bank. <laughs> you didn't hear that from a lot of the other uh, uh, SpaceX groupies. Hey, I am a SpaceX fan. I told you that. But I'm also a realist, and, I, and I'm hoping that uh, Elon will make the right decisions and uh, be able to launch it from other locations. But, you know, I'm sure he will still get some launches out of Boca Chica. I'm sure he'll work that out. And maybe in time, especially after the space station resupply program is over, he can get back to 39A, especially if he flies a few starships and gets everything worked out pretty good. Uh, and even then, though, there's still some risk. Lots of flights, you know. Uh, <laughs> the more flights you got, the more chances of something happening, right? He does plan a lot of flights. But anyway, let's hope him the best. Let's hope all this works out. But it's not a cakewalk, my friends. There, there are real risks associated with this. And we, and we can't take them too lightly when you've got... Uh, and look, a, a Saturn V or the M1 rocket was deemed to have the explosive power of a small atom bomb. So that's nothing to joke with. Nothing to joke about. It is serious energy. The quantity distance is not insignificant. The quantity distance being how far away you need to be to get, keep them being hit by stuff. And even the launch control center 
is definitely within that realm. <laughs> and where the people typically watch these rockets, the viewing stands, are within that area. So we got to think about these things. We got to think about them carefully. Anyway, guys, thank you all for watching and have an awesome day. Bye.